we're going to review our best in class approach to estimating and integration with uh, other platforms that Sage has. We are going to look at Navisworks and getting uh, quantities from Navisworks into an estimate and also, also we'll look at doing the same thing through assemble systems. So uh, at next generation. If you are uh, today's in today's estimating world, if you are getting information, you're probably going to get them off a 2D plan set, obviously, or a 3D model. That 2D plan set is probably going to be a PDF or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, that information into what we call best-in-class solutions. In this case, it's e-takeoff dimension or uh, Autodesk uh, Navisworks or Assemble systems. These are our best in class. They're what people use mostly. And you, you may use other programs for your 2D takeoff, but Dimension is really very widely used in the industry. Uh, if you've ever used any uh, of the Dodge plan viewers, then you know Dimension very, very well. So these are what we call our best in class solutions. We're going to take those, those or those solutions are going to bring information into eTakeoff Bridge. And bridge is that piece that's going to link our takeoff solution with stage estimating. So we're going to bring it into bridge. And whether you're taking it, bringing it in from a 2D uh, plan set or a 3D model, bridge is exactly the same in both cases. And as you'll see, it's a pretty simple uh, program to run. Not a lot to it, but very powerful nonetheless. You'll notice that the arrows are all pointing from the takeoff source down to estimating. We can also go back, back, excuse me, back to the takeoff source from estimating. And so this two-way data flow allows us to do some really cool stuff, which I'll show you later today. Here it is next hour or so. And um, so you'll be able to see this two-way data flow. <clears throat> also, this is what we're going to concentrate on today. From the model to both assemble and Navisworks into bridge and into estimating, and then back again. And so that's what we'll uh, what we'll concentrate on. Wanted to quickly talk about assembles um, process. So from assemble, we're are, we're going to create the model in Revit, right? We're going to create our building model in Revit. We're going to publish from Revit. We publish it to the assemble website, and from then we have a, a separate software called the assemble desktop. We are going to grab that project from the assemble website in the assemble desktop. We'll bring that into bridge, same e takeoff bridge, and then from there we'll bring it into estimating. So we do have that extra step in there. We're going to work with the assemble desktop product and I'll show that to you just in a bit. So let's get let's get started here. I'll minimize this and bring up Navisworks. So here is Navisworks obviously and if you've been into it, you know that it, it, there's a lot here. I have the Navisworks Manage version. Uh, there are three versions of Navisworks. Um, Freedom, Simulate, and Manage. I have Manage, uh, the Assemble, or the, excuse me, the eTakeoff Bridge works with both uh, Manage version and Simulate version. It does not work with the Freedom version. So that's a key thing to remember there. And so as we look at this, uh, you can see here up on the top, we've got all these ribbon bars and it's a pretty complicated thing, especially here in manage. There's the home and the viewpoint. There's reviewing and I can animate things and all the, all the other stuff that I've got here. But what we do is we have an e takeoff integrator for Navisworks. And so if I call up that, I get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons. Simplifies it a lot for estimators basically gives them some really simple tools that we'll look at here uh, for doing their takeoff and getting information out of the model. So here I have the selection tree. And if I, I can, I'll, I'll show you lots more about this as we go along. Here I have the e-takeoff bridge panel, which is also part of this e-takeoff uh, Navisworks integrator. Down here we have the quantification workbook. And this is Navisworks um, it's kind of their way of doing an estimate, but it's really complicated and clunky. And so we'll, but we'll, we'll see how that kind of all, kind of all three of these all tie together. And obviously here I have the model in the, the middle and I can 
you know, as you know, you can pan around and zoom in and zoom out and do things with the model. So as I go over here, I'm going to drill, start to drill down into the objects of the model. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I can drill down to level one, and I'm going to drill down to the walls and the basic walls, and I have exterior walls, and I have interior walls, and there is that wall. So I can start to see, you know, drill down and see where things are. I can show the selected one here with this button, and it will show me where that wall is. Not too big a deal on the outside of the building, but on the inside of the building, if I pick that wall and say show it, then there's the wall there. So it does show me those walls so I can see what's going on with the walls. As I select things here, I'm also seeing them show up down in the quantification workbook. So if I click on here, now I see the exterior walls here in the quantification workbook. And I see there's the, the length and the width. And if I scroll over here to the right, there's the height. So those are the two-story walls, obviously, 26 feet tall. There's the area and the volume and other properties that these walls have assigned to them. And so I can go, I'm going to go to this wall here. Let's pick on that one front wall here. And if I go over here to properties, I can see that there's also some Navisworks properties that have been assigned to this wall. There's uh, all of these properties and there's loading and oh, heat gain and all kinds of things. There's an unbounded height and there's other other properties here, lots of properties on this wall, as you can see. So what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to what we're going to do is get ready to do some takeoff, and th that's one of the real advantages that I see, at least, to a model is there's not you know if you're doing takeoff off a 2D set of plans, you've got to count and trace and areas, and the model it's all there. You're just going to grab it and take it into your estimate. So one of the first things we're going to do is click here on interior walls. And, uh, the, the family, I guess, is what it's called. And I, I see here that I've got all these basic walls here. And what I want to do is I want to append a description. And you'll see how this works here in just a second. Uh, interior floor one. And it will append that to the uh, wall description. So I've got that floor one here on floor one and um, also got the same thing on floor two. And so now what I, now I'm ready to, actually that's all the work that I'm gonna do here, right here right now for, um, for, for uh, model conditioning. And the model conditioning is making sure that the walls are walls and that they are the right height and the right thickness and the right type of object and that kind of thing. And that's what you would do here first and what and that's what assemble systems is really good at is doing that different kind of uh, model conditioning. What I do though is I'm going to start bridge, and so here is the e takeoff bridge. What it does here is it's showing us when you're in this resources window, it's showing us the Sage database that I've linked to this bridge. So I already created the bridge, and we've got it right here. It's showing us our list of assemblies in the database, or it could show us our list of items in the database. So I've got my doors and I've got, uh, there's, there's all my wood doors right there. So all my different kinds of wood doors. And so got that, here's our assemblies, here's uh, concrete assemblies, there's all the different concrete assemblies that I have. All right, so you know what's going on with the Sage database, I, I assume. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, um, this wall and we're going to just highlight one of these walls i'll show you some basic let me do this 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 and i'm going to just drag and drop this right on top of this assembly right here and it's going to bring it over and this is a pretty complicated assembly you can see here in the middle that there's a lot of questions that it asks over here on the right in the primary takeoff window is what is available to me from the model. You'll notice that it's pretty limited. I don't have a lot of the variables that I can answer here, but I do have the model height and I have the model length. And so all I did was drag this over here like this 
and this over here like this. And then I can come down here. Here's that interior floor one that I added to the wall description. So that's down here in the location. And that just happened. That happened because I did this, drug this one down to here. Okay, so um, we've got that. These are the different WBS codes that I have set up. There are ways to, to fill these out and enter these in and get things going as we, uh, when we get into it real, a little more deeply. But what I've got here is I've got it mapped. At the height and the length map, I can then generate a quantity, just adding a pass. And as I do that, watch the quantity field down here in the bottom. If I do this, there's my number of studs that I need or length, length excuse me, lingual feet of studs and pins and uh, things. And so it's calculated those quantities. And now I can send them to the estimate by clicking this button here. So that wall, that one wall has been sent to the estimate. I'm going to click this hide assign button over here in Navisworks in the 3D view. Okay. All right. So that's, that's manual takeoff. It's great, but we can do a lot better than that. We can go to automatic takeoff. So I have this automatic button. And here are all of my walls that I have. And I want to just send them over to the estimate. So I'm going to submit fully automatic assignments, and it's going to send those walls over to the estimate. And so, again, you didn't have to do any tracing. You, you do have to fill out your assembly values, values and things like that. But a uh, really quick way to do an estimate and get your quantities in there. All right, so those walls have been sent over. If I minimize bridge, you can see what I did is I clicked this hide assigned button up here in the e takeoff ribbon. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what that says is anytime an object, whenever an object is assigned to uh, the estimate, hide it. So assigned, assigned to an estimate, so hide them. And if I look at this, you can see that there are no walls here in the building. They've all been assigned to the estimate. So if I click that off, they come back. All right. So now I'm going to go back here to bridge. And I'm going to close this bridge and go to the estimate. Minimize this. Here is our estimate. And so this is, uh, if you've been, in, if you've got 1812 estimating, that's what I have here. If you've got earlier versions, um, it'll look fairly similar. If you've got pervasive, this will look pretty a lot different uh, one of the things to note is that uh, this is version 1812 version 1911 should be out maybe within less than a month about three weeks I think is when they're scheduled to come out so um, keep it keep an eye out for that it's got some nice new, nice new features and uh, will be a nice addition so uh, that noted you know that in say just me I can I have different uh, sequences, which sequences are down here. They're how I group the rows. So here it is by assembly or combined assembly or floor. And let's see, that was location. So location assembly. I just, so you'll notice that I said location assembly, location group phase. It doesn't have that location here. So I need to add that to my, to my uh, layout. Layout being the uh, group of um, group of columns that I have, and so location there it is. I'll pick that one. Say okay. There's that exterior floor one. There's interior floor one and two. Okay, so I can regroup my estimate really quickly like that, just by a couple of button clicks. I can group it by whatever I want uh, here. And then I can also get um, the, uh, so I can group it by different rows. I can get different columns to display. I can even get wild and crazy and go up here and do an assembly with color and have colors up here. So lots of options with the, um, with the layouts and the sequences. I'm gonna go back here to assembly group and I've got this, okay. So, um, 
you know that we have the, you know, all those things that we can do with the spreadsheet. We can look at the totals down here at the bottom and uh, see, see that. But the main thing to show you today is that with this blue carrot will take is, is that tells us that the takeoff source is not sage estimating its e takeoff. And so if I right click here and I drill down, it'll take me back to bridge. Before I do that, I wanna do one other thing. Let's review this assembly. So this is a one of the front walls. This is a uh, some block above a curtain wall. And so I've got this and there's one pass in the, um, in the assembly. And here is that pass. So keep this in mind. We have one pass here. I'm gonna close this. No, I don't want to generate those. So we got one pass for this assembly. And I know that I generated that assembly from e takeoff because there's that little blue tick mark in the corner of the takeoff quantity field. If I right click on that, I can drill down the bridge. Okay, so bridge is gonna open up. It's gonna say, there's the wall. There are, there's the length and the height that are already mapped. And there's the wall itself highlighted in blue right here in the model. Now, it knows that these are already mapped because once you map uh, variables in the system, whether it's in 2D or 3D, once mapped, always mapped is what we say. And so these are mapped forever uh, for this project, the next project, for other estimators going uh, as far as we can in the future. So once mapped, always mapped, these are good to go. I don't ever need to map them again. I showed you what the mapping was like just to get you an idea of how it worked. So I've come back. So somebody says, hey, where did that quantity come from? You go right click in your estimate and you're right here and you can say, well, this is what the model told me and this is what that wall is. Okay, great. Now, I know this never happens in real life, but what happens if the model changes? You can have a, there's a compare models button here. And so when, uh, when that does change, all you start, all you need to do is click here Please select the project to compare, and we're gonna open up this file right here. And so we'll open that up. Do I want to compare them? I'm gonna say yes, and when I do, watch this wall. So I click yes, and it goes through, and the system finds all the changes. There's the change that we're looking for. There's that, it got two feet taller. Now there's three kinds of changes that we could have in a model or plan set, additions, deletions, and revisions. This is a revision. There've also been walls that have been added and others that have been deleted. I'll show you how we find those or how Bridge helps us find those. I have no idea where those walls that got added are or how many there are. Let's go back here though, and let's go back here and let's start Bridge. And so here's where we were. Remember, we were looking at that wall. Let's, this is the assignment list. These are all the walls or in the, objects, or in this case, walls that were sent to the estimate. Let's refresh the list right here. When I do that, it goes back and it checks the assignments from the bridge database and says, ah, there are some changes. Those are ones noted with this little pencil icon here. There's also this one here with the X and it's red. That's a deletion. So I have revisions and deletions, and I'll show you in a second where the additions come in. What I'm gonna do though, is there's a bunch of these right here and all through here that are unchanged. I'm gonna filter those out by hitting this button right here. And these are my changes. So what can I do? I can come here and I can say, look at this one right here. Here it is. It's the same length, but it got two feet taller. What do I want to do? I want to apply the changes and send it and send it to the estimate. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to send it to the estimate. So now that my estimate has been updated with that new wall area and height. Now these, here's uh, several walls that were revised and a couple that were deleted. With the new version of Bridge, I can submit all those changes automatically. I can also go through and review them manually if I want to. What happened here? 
Well, this one got a little longer. Okay. Well, I can accept that change and send it to the SD. So you can go through each one of those and see what, uh, what what's going on. Or I could just hit this automatic button and all of those will go over at the same time. In addition, I can say, put this, append this description onto the assembly. So I'll just say it's Rev1, and I'll click OK. And it's going to send those over to the estimate. Like that. OK? Done. So now the revisions and the deletions have been sent to the estimate. Also, if I, that's review mode. We've looked at manual mode, automatic mode, and review mode uh, here this morning. Automatic mode, ah, there's the walls that have been added to the estimate. So I can click this, and I can say those walls have been sent over as well. So I've added walls, deleted walls, and revised walls. Let's go look at those in the estimate. So I close, the, close bridge, go to the estimate. Here I am here. And here are those changes. This has gone up. And we now have 553 blocks. I think we had 400 and some before. And you can see some of these. Here's the one that has that Rev1 tacked on the, on the end of the assembly description. And there's some others down here that would have it. There's one too. Not all of them had it because I, I got the, didn't accept all of them. And not all of them are part of Rev1. So some of these are part of the base bid. Okay, so I've got all of that. I've run from the takeoff source to the estimate, from the estimate back to the takeoff source. And we've done some, looked at how it handles revisions and helps us find those revisions uh, wherever they are in the model. If I also go back here and I review the assembly, I can't say, ah, before we had three, one pass, now we have three passes through the assembly. If I view the pass audit, here's the first pass. The second pass, you'll notice there's a negative one at the top. That's where it backed out the first pass. And then the third pass is that new uh, length. Notice there's the 12 foot height right there. So it keeps an audit trail of our changes as we're moving forward. So that's, um, so let's see here, do I, no, no. Okay, so that's what we can do with DAMP squirts. It's pretty pretty cool. Um, it does uh, work well, and it does allow us to go back and forth from the estimate to the takeoff source and, and vice versa. I do also want to show you assemble systems. And so I will minimize this, and I will bring over assemble systems. So. Here, this is the Assemble Systems website. It is all, obviously all your projects are here in this list. And uh, I've got, oh, I've got a bunch of them here, just in our test system. And uh, so you've got your list of projects here. And this is the one we're gonna look at here. Same project, just different, uh, different platform here. So Assemble is a conditioning, a system of engagement, they call it. It allows you to condition and organize and connect your team members. Uh, they're trying to break down silos and bring cloud access to everyone. It is completely cloud-based. Um, you do connect through Bridge. Remember we had that uh, diagram of how the workflow works from Revit to the Assemble to the Assemble Bridge to the takeoff bridge to Estimate. A lot of pieces and parts, but it's really pretty simple to use. So here is, um, here's, here's our different views of the project. We have these, um, so I'll just look at this one here. And here is the, we'll load that one up. And there we go. And it's coming, there's the model. So I can spin this around, I can zoom in, and I can see the model. And I can also see the um, objects in the model. And so these are those 
objects or the properties of those. This is the model tree. I've got these, I can group these by category. And this is where the real power of assemble comes in is you can start to group it any way you want. And as an estimator, that can be a great feature. I can group it by show me all the one hour walls or show me all of the casework or show me all the doors or show me all the doors and then show me by height or you know just show me fire doors. Show, make up whatever you want and you'll be able to group and sort and organize by those categories. I'm not uh, gonna, gonna go into that today. We wanna concentrate on uh, the link to estimating, but Here's those interior walls that we looked at. There's that, if we looked here, there's that one wall right there. And if you can see it, it is there. And if I spin around, there it is. That same wall that we looked at before, right there. And so, um, let's see, let's just zoom extend and get that back there. There it is. So there's that wall right there. All right, so we can start to look at those same walls. We've also got the assemble properties over here. We had properties in this wall uh, in, that we could see in Navisworks. An advantage to assemble systems is we can create our own properties as well. And so I've got a heck of a list of properties here. There's a, there's a one called with the property of hello world. And um, so you could create whatever you wanted to here. These are, there's some of the model properties from the model. There's dimensions. I've also got phasing. There's analyticals and things you can do. A lot of power here, really, really cool stuff that you can do. These are assemble properties. These are model properties, different things. I can create uh, assemble properties here and assemble systems. And then I can start to work with those. I could have model properties for a project or for my site or whatever I want to do. All right, so this is uh, so this is the um, the the, the one-off uh, project that we've looked at. If I look at the walls, here's just a model where all I'm viewing is walls. Same project, just wall view, not everything view. So you can see I'm not seeing any windows. I'm not seeing the roof or the slab or anything, just the walls. Same stuff, just different view. All right. So this is the assemble website. And there is a lot to this. Uh, barely, barely even scratch the surface. But what I want to show you now is um, we have what we want to do is remember from that diagram as we went from Revit to the assemble website, the assemble bridge. This is the assemble bridge. And so I've got this same model view with the walls, the wall view. And I did that here. I went to uh, the walls and loaded that view. So there's a there's the wall. There's our, there's our favorite wall right there that we're, uh, we were used to looking at. And so what I can do, let me uh, minimize this here, and I'm going to bring up our bridge. This is so what we're going to do. This is our e takeoff bridge on the right, and our assemble bridge on the left. With the assemble bridge, I'm going to come here to. Oh, let me see. I want to do an interior four and seven eight. There is that wall. It's hidden back there behind a couple things. There it is. Kind of, sort of. And so what I can do is I can say, you know, um, here, there we go. Show the properties. So I can see the properties that are assigned to that wall. I can't, in, in the assemble website, I can create properties and I can assign properties. In, the, in this assemble bridge, all I can do is view properties. I can't make new ones or assign or change that. But once I get them, what I can do is I'm going to open up uh, here in our e takeoff bridge. I'm going to open up this this bridge. I've got an, I've got a couple bridges open because of what we're doing today. And so I am going to let me see here. I think I want to do a simple one. So I'm going to take this 
and I am going to save the e-takeoff mappings, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste them. Okay, let's see here. Or I can drag. What am I? Oh, it's been a while here. Let's see. If I go here to the interior studs, now if I can paste that. There we go. Copy the takeoff bridge and paste. There we go. So I've got those values here from the height, the height, the length, the length, sorry for the glitch and how to do that. Um, and so now I can start, I can start to process those and I can run a pass. And when I do that, I can map there, there it goes. It calculates the quantity and I can send that to the estimate. Same thing with this one, this one also has the automatic. So that was a manual thing. And now I've got it automatically assigned to all of these walls and I can send all of these walls over to the estimate as well. So as you see, look, as I'm going here, watch that little icon right there in the assembled bridge, that's telling me that that's been assigned to the estimate. So all of these uh, 125 measurements have been sent to the estimate and we are good to go there. And so what I can do is close this and go to the estimate and minimize this. And here is all of that information in the estimate. Here are all the different assemblies with my different walls in them. Interior and exterior. All right, so and I can do all the same things over here that I did in the other. Um, and so there's my totals. And so it's all right there, ready to go. Now, I can drill down if I do that again. If I drill down here, drill down the bridge, and again, there's the wall. And if I go here into the bridge, there's the wall right there. So that's the wall that's highlighted in the estimate showing it up here, showing it here in the assemble bridge. So we've got that same two-way uh, data flow from assemble to the estimate and the estimate back to assemble. One thing to note is that I will need to map everything each time I do an estimate. So I, it, it does not remember the cut and paste that I, or the cut and copy that I did here. That needs to be done for each estimate at this point. The, I believe that's on the boards to change, but that's the way it works at this time. So um, when we were in Navisworks, I showed you how we can um, compare models for changes. The process here is a little different. So if I, I'm going to, but I have to show you, I'm going to show you in the PowerPoint because I don't have, I need to have Revit to start the process. So start the slideshow from this slide. And so revisions and assemble, again, are gonna go from Revit to the assemble to assemble desktop to bridge to estimated. And so we're gonna go into assemble, or excuse me, yeah, we're gonna log into the assemble site, select our project, and then we're gonna publish them from Revit to the assemble site. Assemble always reads the current version. That's where we get into a little, we get, it's a little interesting just because we, it's always gonna have that current version there. So no matter, we, we want it to, we're, we want it to use that current version for our revised estimate. So we publish a new version and then we can publish that model to it. And then we can go into Assemble Bridge and open up that new version of the model. So you've gone into Revit, you've made the changes or gone into Revit or, or got a new Revit model from an ar the architect designer. You've, you've uh, published it to assemble and then you come up here to the assemble bridge and open it up. And then um, you can uh, open it here and look at the uh, again, refresh the resource list in the takeoff bridge, 
and it will find the changes. And so we can go here and we can say, oh, there's a wall that got added. And so we can publish that. Automatic is the same, there, or there's the uh, review mode with walls that were revised and deleted. Same idea, go in, there's a wall that got revised, it got a little bit shorter, and then we can publish that to the estimate. There is a wall that got deleted, we can take that out as well. And those changes are published to the estimate. So it's the same process, it just starts in a different point with the actual model being in Revit and then published to the website versus just being able to do it in the Navisworks model, uh, file. So a little bit different, but it does, uh, does work and it does uh, help us uh, with the change. The nice thing about the e-takeoff bridge is it helps us find the changes, the additions, the deletions, or the revisions, whether it's in an assemble model or whether it's in a Revit model, or whether it's in an assemble systems model that we're working with or a 